So after all of this, we're gonna talk about your background and where are you grew up from? Um, Philippines in Cebu. So, Cebu. Yeah. Okay. Cebu, lots of people from Cebu. So is Cebu is a big city? No, it's the um. Province. It's not also like it's probably I consider the second biggest city in um, second in the Philippines, yeah, after Manila. So, um, so it's quite yeah. It's probably the second most uh, populous and I'd say successful city in the Philippines. Yeah. So you grew up in the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's a city. Yeah. Okay. But it's not like when we think of city, it's like those high-rise buildings. Yes, but I'm still in the fringe in the residential areas. So yeah. yeah, yeah, I know what you mean by that. Let's say if you want to go to an apartment, mm -hmm. uh, not apartment, department store, mm -hmm. you still can find a department store in Cebu, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of them. Because if you really live at the village, you have to travel five, six hours. Ah, uh, not that, not yeah. that. So probably um, if the, the closest store that I could go to there right now would probably take me about 15 minutes. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you pretty much a city girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is growing up in Philippine life for you? Um, oh, it was, I, I would remember it like during the like very younger years, it was more fun, simpler back then because we didn't have got gadgets. Okay. Like yeah, so we would play in the streets, like we would we know our neighbors, we would go to our neighbors' houses, play with them, and then you know, um it's a good kind of growing up environment because it's like you're interacting. Okay. With people nowadays, um, people are always just on their cell yeah. phones, on their tablets. Um I even remember that we would have um, blackouts, there won't be any okay, electricity, yeah. but we would be in the streets putting on um, those rubber tires on fire just so that there's fire in the street okay. and then we would be playing on the street. So, so much fun. Um, in terms, if I have to relate it to my um, gender, like when I started, like of course I was already very um, feminine. feminine. So, uh, but I didn't have that concept yet. Okay. So of trans or even, even I don't know. I can't even remember if I thought of myself as a woman. Okay. Um, how about you? Do you have a gay period? Okay. Yeah, it's more like that. Like, um, so I would get teased or heckled like in the streets when I'm feminine. walking because I'm feminine and of course like I look like a boy. Um, um. So when I started going to school, in my elementary years, there wasn't really other feminine guys. So I was more of close with girls. I was always with girls. But when I went to high school, that's when I saw other like effeminate guys. Yes. Like, so and we called ourselves gay. So that's how we started. It's more of like gay. So do you meet those people being friends with those people? Sorry. Are you friends with those people when you go to high school? Yeah, so they became my friends. Okay. Like, so because you are the same kind. Yeah. And always got uh, always got But we, know, we, we made yeah, we just made a joke of like we were women trapped in men's bodies. And it oh, was kind wow. of like a joke back then. So yeah. we did not have a concept yet of transgender. Okay. Like a proper concept. Mm -hmm. But uh this is how old? I was probably um, high school, so I was probably twelve. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how about your parents? Do you uh, do you come out? Any things like that? No, we never really talked with. I never really talked about about it with my parents. So, we were never confrontational. You've been until now. Um. Yeah. So what's happened is that in I was quite fortunate that my parents were quite accepting like there was a time when they told me that they didn't like what was going on with me trying to be a woman like um or trying to be gay that's in their terms um but i was kind of an achiever in school okay so i bring home some awards some honors so 
in, in a way that made it easier for them to accept who I am. Okay. We never talked about it. It just like gradually acceptance, gradual acceptance. So they they knew that I wouldn't have any girlfriend. So um, when I started working, I helped in supporting them. So and then up to now, when they moved to the U.S. And then I was in Singapore. They didn't know that I was already started to change. Like I grew my hair. So the first time I went to them, I still had short hair. Like I still, um, so they just were thinking that I was gay. But the next time I went there, I was already long hair. I was already dressing like, like a woman. And they never, we never talked about it. Never? No. And then it just gradually until like two years ago when I went back. They already started calling me as a daughter in other people's eyes. We never talked about it. Do you ever question why? Oh, before I ask you this question, mm -hmm. because it's important. <laughs> so you you, so, you you say recently they 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 call you daughter. daughter. Yeah, because um they already started looking at me and then saying ah oh, okay <laughs> it's like um so that like they're son has become like a daughter because I'm starting to become like a woman but we never even my brothers I didn't talk um, with them about it but I tagged them in some information before about transgender in Facebook so so that they can have a read about it um, and then my parents as well it's like yeah it's it, it I just let it happen kind of Mm, gradually, okay. naturally. Actually, want to know what they're thinking? Sometimes I think about it. Like, you know, oh, what they actually thinking because since they never say anything, you know? Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, I do wonder. So, I'll probably... I, and I've been thinking about asking them. Yeah. It's just that I didn't have the courage yet. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe in the future. I'm planning to go and visit them end of this year, so probably I'll ask them that time. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. It's still, I think it's really fascinating, you know, because like when they never mention anything, you know, mm. it's just like, because when my mom talked to me, you know, I mean, it's like, I, I, I feel so strange, you know, mm. and and we have a long conversation, you know, until midnight, two, three o'clock. And all I can think about, you know, like she's really disappointed sitting on the corner, you uh -huh. know. And I'm just be like, mm, so tired. Uh, I okay. want to. Uh, why? Why we have this conversation? Uh, yeah, I think it's <laughs> and because my, um, my, my father is not the like the decision maker of the family. So I think he allows, he's used to allowing things to just happen. Uh, my mother, on the other hand, it's like, um, I think she's more open. So she's not the type who is um, very traditional and strict. Like she's religious and all, okay. but she's more of supportive of, like he's, she's not, yeah, it's, she, I think she's more open. Like, so, but you say she's religious because religion um, can be and well and religious in a way that you know you that she would pray to a god and then but it's not like something that she would use to judge other people. Okay. She wouldn't. I I I don't think I've ever heard her before, even judging other people, based on religion. Okay. Like unless if it's something bad, for example, if you're going to. Um, in the past, like if someone loans someone money and just pushes them until they get poorer and poorer and poorer, then that's when she would say, ah, oh, she's gonna be cursed. Okay. Yeah. So, but nothing, for example, um, she never said, even to me, even when I was young, and then they would call me gay, that she never even used it, like you would go to hell. Um, never. I've never heard that from my parents. So, so your mom is a uh, uh, lady with you know common sense. Yeah. Mm. If yeah. you hear noises, 
there's something. <laughs> I think they're fixing the pipe by yeah. goodness. <laughs> uh, at this time. 2006, I moved to Singapore. Okay. Because I found, um, I thought that I could find job a job there. Okay. So, okay, before we go any further, mm -hmm. so during this time, do you have a better understanding about your um, identity? Not yet. It's like more of still, I still label myself as gay. Okay. So even even at that time, um, we still did not have the concept of transgender. So it's more of every one of us were gays. But any boyfriend? No. Because this time you already after is it after twenty yeah, years already? It's like well there were guys that I liked, but the ones I liked were like in the office. Okay. Well I did not um I wouldn't call it a boyfriend because um Do you guys have fun? <laughs> well we just made out okay. an office mate of mine who was rumored to be gay. Okay. Um so we had a make out session when he was drunk. So and we kind of like I thought we were dating for like a month, but but yeah, it wasn't. I wouldn't call it something. Okay. And then I also dated, like I had kind of a text boyfriend. Okay. Mm. But you like serious? You like texting? Huh? Well, it was it was the start of the texting period. <laughs> I cannot stand texting. Uh, but, 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 I mean, not because text, that was a long distance okay. one. So the texting text is, one. is for younger people. So I, I'm the one that call people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. What happened in Singapore? So in Singapore, I went there, found a job there, and then um, when I was there, my friend was also there. Another friend who's also a trans. A but trans? We, we, okay. both, we both identified at that time as gay. Okay. He, she was so sexually active, and I was not. So she actually influenced me in some way. She influenced me okay. like, because she would bring me come here come here like let's go and to meet people there. yeah so that was also kind of when i started to explore sexually um and then because when i started to explore that i couldn't i'll, I'll give you a background first every time i go to a gay bar i'm not comfortable i don't like flirting I never like flirting with gays. Okay. It's it's not it's not something that um, um that should offend gays. It's more of a, about me. Okay. It's like it's more of like when I look at now the reason why at that time I could not understand why I was not comfortable. But looking now when I had transitioned, I have understood why. It's because when I step into a gay bar the gays there would be attracted to my being, to my masculine okay. aspect. And me, me being a trans, that's not really something that I like. Yes. Yeah, so because I want to be a woman. Yes. It's like, it's my gender identity. That's my, that's what I identify with. So at that time, I could not understand. So when I became sexually active, the ones that I always... Uh, that I would always go for the straight guys. So I no the straight acting gay or straight no, guys. Straight guys, not even the straight acting gays. Okay. So I would start, and because they're straight, I would start dressing up as a woman. Okay. So it's like I I had like I bought a wig. Like, so it it kind of started on a sexual note, but that started to make sense to me. Okay. Like, why am I not, why am I not um, comfortable going into a gay bar? Why am I only going for the straight guys? So it's because they want, I want them to see me as a woman. Okay. So that's what I understood now. So it's part of my journey yeah. of understanding. You, you kind of cost dress during that time, mm -hmm. but you don't, you didn't do the transitions? I didn't do the transition at work. Uh, it's more of, but outside, outside of work, I already started, like, when I go out, I've been dressing as a woman. Okay. But it started gradually, like, more of just, um, talks that are from ladies, until, like, 
two years or three years later, I've already started wearing dress, full on dress. Okay. Yeah. So, and then when I moved to Australia, I've already been um, dressing up as a woman, except when I go to work. Okay. For your first job? For my first job. Yeah. Yeah. So here, you're doing your HRT. Mm -hmm. So how is your journey of your identity come along? Um, so in so I moved here 2012. Mm -hmm. I haven't transitioned yet in terms of HRT, mm -hmm. but I've already dressed as a woman, living my life as a woman outside work. Mm -hmm. But in 2013, a friend introduced me to the concept of HRT, and then I started looking into it, and then I went and see, I went and saw a endocrinologist for my hormones, and then I went and saw a psychiatrist to assess that I do have a different gender um, identity than what was assigned to me at birth. So that's how it started. So I started taking hormones and that also affected my libido. <laughs> my, so it's because I started the hormones, so the testosterone goes down, the estrogen goes up. So that means I'm no longer um, sexually interested that as, as before yeah. so yeah so um and then i started to change i changed my name so now i've gone into work where i'm fully as a woman so that's now i'm living my life 100 percent of okay. the gender i with what i identify with yeah. so let's go for the hrt first mm -hmm. do you feel better after the treatment yeah it's 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 definitely better because it has helped. Although before, even without HRT, I would say I was still a bit androgynous. Okay. But taking HRT has already helped me a lot. Like um, it softened my features even yeah. more. Like my hair is a bit thicker than before. So pretty happy with it. Okay. Um, but so I, I have to say that it has to be done correctly. Yes. Because. It's not, um, I've told a lot of trans friends, like, you cannot just self-medicate, just take on any pills without measuring, um, without going for a blood test. You need to measure your hormone levels because it doesn't mean that you'll take a lot of, let's say, undercore yes. or any, that a lot of them will actually shoot up your, it's, yes, it's gonna shoot up. But the effect is only gonna be as good as you're taking it um, correctly in the right amount compared to the risks. When you're when you're um, taking a lot, your risks are higher. Yes. But the benefit is not going higher. So true, you know, yeah. because I have a lot of friends and people who are self medicate. Yeah. And they just keep taking it without the measurements. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, this definitely makes sense, you know. Yeah. So, of course, another thing that I want to talk to you um, about this interview because I think you are someone really different. Mm -hmm.